Okay, folks, welcome to Best Stock Charts for the coming week. This is Bob Desmond, and what we're going to talk about today, our performance last week, and also the charts that we're watching going into the new trading week. Before we begin, let's uh, remind everyone tomorrow, Sunday night, Sunday Night Futures Live, join us, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll review the opening price action of the futures. We'll also take some chart requests from the audience and, of course, initially from our members. It's always a good time, so please join us. There's a link below. You can get alerted if you enter your email address, and you'll get alerted 15 minutes to a half hour prior to us going live. Because sometimes that notification bell on YouTube does not work. If you're already on our email list, no need to re-enter your email address. We already have it. We don't want you to get duplicate emails. So let's begin with our week last week. It was quiet. Uh, we, we booked some profits on PSA Public Storage. We opened that trade up on the 24th, closed it on the 9th for 3 spot 84% profit. Let's take a look at the chart really quick. This is a daily chart. We booked profits in here because we saw a fade on the day. And I was concerned that we would get a pullback, which we, in fact we did. However, we did bounce back on Friday. I still like the uh, trade longer term, but the market has me a bit concerned. I went over with members on the week ahead commentary, our strategy moving into the new trading week. That's already posted in the members area, folks. So if you're a member, go check it out. I'm going to be going over the focus stocks, on best stock charts now, but I do a deeper dive on the week ahead commentary. So go check it out. And when I say a deeper dive, I mean weekly charts, daily charts, monthly charts, and when necessary, intraday charts. So PSA, nice trade. I still like it. If you're still long, I would remain long here. A nice rebound, a retested support. Uh, longer term, still bullish on PSA. Now the first watch stock we have up is Intercontinental Exchange. We booked profits back here. We were long on the breakout. We booked profits back here. Nice trade. We were worried about a pullback. And sure enough, we got the pullback. But now we're looking to get back in below $100 per share. Now, last week was a bearish week, right? We, they tried to rally it. It faded. This leads me to believe that there's a good chance we may see a continuation breakdown. But what we do have here. And for those not familiar with the charting software I'm using, it's TrendSpider, the next generation in automated technical analysis. If you're not a subscriber to it, you are missing an arrow in your quiver. You are not equipped with the same technology that your competitors are using. Sign up. Get that arrow in your quiver. Take advantage of automated trend lines, like just a click of a button. We're on a weekly chart. If you want weekly trend lines, there you go. There's your support level. I think that that's an extreme support level. We did close at one on Friday. But if we break through to a new lower low, I could see us heading down here to the support level. So I want to create an alert. If we get down to that mark, oh, and by the way, I didn't say 35% off of Trend Spider. You're not going to find a better price on the internet. Use the link below, and you can apply it to any of their memberships. You get a seven-day free trial offer. Also, I give it away free with gold and silver level memberships to the contrarian trader. So I want to get notified pretty quickly of when we hit that support level. So now you can see we're ready to go here. I want to keep this active. Throughout next week, I want to see an alert fire off when we touch, bounce, create an alert, and there's our alert. And note how it coincides with a volume shelf. These bars here are known as volume by price bars. And you can see how much time was spent prior to the breakout trying to get through this resistance level. It should now act as support. Now, what I also want to take a look at is seasonality and we have data going back to November of 2005 let's bring this up September we're up 60% of the times October valuable data folks we're up 86% of the time so intercontinental exchange looking very interesting into the new trading week next chart up 
is Canada Goose Holdings. Now, we were long of Canada Goose Holdings. Let's go to a daily chart first. Up here. And I don't have it up here. The 200-day moving average is right up here. And we knew it was going to act as resistance. So we booked profits up and into it. Sure enough, we got the pullback. And we have bounced back. So wise move on our part. The question is, do we break out or do we put in a lower high? I think that we break out. Weekly chart. Because we broke out back here. And this is the key reason why we got long of Canada Goose Holdings. We had a retest the following week, then a rally. We booked our profits, then we pulled back last week, did another retest of weekly support, and we rallied off that support level. Very bullish stuff. Stokes rising on a weekly basis. Let's use our automated trend lines. We're on a weekly chart. We'll go with weekly resistance levels first and support levels. And you can see that we're going to have resistance up at around 27.22. Let's take these off really quick and see if we have any monthly support and or resistance levels. We do. It's support way down here. Not relevant to the weekly chart and our analysis. So we'll take that off. Let's take a quick peek at seasonality. Let's see how much data we have first. Not much. This only goes back four years. So... You know, that's, that's not a lot of data. The month of September, we're up 100% of the times thus far. But again, thin data. October is a fairly weak month with a rise in November. So I don't know how much emphasis I would put on seasonality for Canada Goose Holdings. If I had a lot more data, 10 years plus, I'd feel a lot more comfortable. But otherwise, net-net, I'm bullish on the chart. I think we do move up higher. And the other good thing here is that when you open up the analyst rankings, and I really could care less what these guys say if one came out tomorrow and said, listen, uh, we're upgrading to a buy Canada Goose Holdings. I don't care. What I do care about is the opportunity to have a headline goose, pardon the pun, to the shares. And what provides that? Take a look at all of these hold ratings. D.A. Davidson. Cowan, Goldman, OTR. So you have a number of investment banks following this company. And if they come out with an upgrade, well, then you'll see a pop higher in the shares. So this is more of a contrarian indicator. You also have B of A out with a sell. So you have more negative analysts out there than positive yet. Not surprisingly, the shares are recovering very, very nicely. So another tool, another arrow in your quiver using analyst assessments. This is brand new. So what we'll be looking for with Canada Goose is a retest of this volume shelf right here at 24.75. We'll entertain opening up a position. It all depends upon how the market's behaving. So simply because we hit that support level doesn't necessarily mean that we will get long of the shares. We're being very, very disciplined of late, not trading too aggressively in this market because it's been weak. And we've seen a lot of fading. You've seen a lot of gapping up in the market, yet we close down on the day. That's not a healthy market. But I do believe that we're beginning to find a bottom and Canada Goose is one of those trades that we happen to like. The next chart up, Borg Warner. This is a weekly chart. And again, folks, I do a deeper dive with members on the week ahead commentary posted in the members area. Daily charts, entry points will be listed in the members area, along with stop loss points and price targets as well. By tomorrow evening, when we go live, 6 p.m. Again, join us, 6 p.m. tomorrow night. All right, so Borg... All right, so Borg Warner had broken out here on August the 10th, the week of August the 10th, pulled back, retested, held, and now we're struggling 
to break out. Now, what I really like about this chart is that when you use the automated trend lines, we're on a weekly chart. However, I want to take a look at monthly support and resistance levels. Do we have any? Click a button. There we have it, folks. This speaks volumes to me. The fact that we have broken out above monthly resistance and a volume shelf. Yes, we have some topping action because we have another volume shelf above. But I want to know when we retest this support level because we will be looking to open up a long trade. Is it a guarantee that we'll open up that long trade? No. It depends upon our feel for how the market is behaving. We want to manage our risk right now. This is a very difficult market to trade. A lot going on. Social unrest, geopolitical unrest. You have an election coming up. A lot of stuff going on. You need to be very, very careful. Keep a lot of cash on the sidelines to take advantage of opportunities. This is one of them. Borg Warner looking very good. Before we leave, let's go over seasonality. We have 15 years worth of data. Very respectable. For the month of September, we're up 67%. In October, we rise to 79%. So this month, next month, and even November are, and December are fairly solid months. So we have seasonality acting as a wind at our back. Very favorable trade in terms of technicals and in terms of seasonality. So one of our favorites going into the new trading week. And note how it's held up relative to the rest of the market over the past several weeks. The next chart up, UNP. Folks, the railroads were up last week along with the transports. Now, using the automated trend lines, you can see that we rallied last week up and into the upper band of resistance. What this tells me is that I can't buy here right now. I would need to go to a daily chart to identify support below where we would look to open on a pullback or... Were we able to break out above this upper band of resistance? I would want to know about it. I want to know when we break through, touch, and bounce. And we'll keep this active for a couple of weeks. And if you want to know where there's support below here, take the weekly trend lines off, then overlay monthly. And there you have it, folks. Now I want to set my alert here to identify when we hit that monthly support level, if we hit that monthly support level, because I'm a buyer at that support level with a stop loss right below it. This is the value of using automated technical analysis. Let the computer do the work. Set your alerts when you see opportunity and use a rules-based approach to enter and exit your trades. So keep this active through next week touch and bounce and there we have it we're good to go we know exactly what our game plan is with union pacific as we move into the new trading week and yes i do send out trade alerts to all our members when we open add or sell seasonality seasonality for the past 15 years in september very favorable 72 percent and in, in october it's up 57%, but then trends higher through December. So a seasonally, seasonally favorable period of time. And look at this, through spring, how favorable it is. So I'm liking this trade here. So members, more to come. When we fire off our trades, you will be alerted. The last chart up I have is U.S. Concrete. Weekly chart. So we can overlay... Our weekly trend lines, see if they lend any help. Not really. Not really. Just telling us where we have resistance above, by and large. But what we can do is use the drawing tool and identify the fact that we have a very, very nice setup forming here. And I want to know when we break through this 
resistance level. I think it's going to happen fairly soon if it does happen, unless we fail. So we're good to go. And I also want to know if and when we happen to, by chance, retest this lower band of support. And we'll keep sensitivity on this pretty loose relative to how I normally use it. Uh, USCR, and we'll keep it active for the week. Touch, bounce, good. So here we're, we're ready to go. Set it and forget it. Let's check out seasonality. Uh, it's saying 10 years. Let's see if we have more. More is always better. No, we do not. So we have 10 years worth of data. Respectable. September up 50% of the times. October rises through pretty strong November and December. So again, we're looking at technicals which are improving. You have seasonality acting as a wind at the stock's back. Also, when you take a look at analyst estimate, a lot of holds here, which are akin to sell. And that's a good thing in my book. Because again, it influences headline news in a positive way rather than a negative. So this is a contrarian indicator, one that I look at. So we're good to go here, folks. These trades are looking rock solid. The only thing that has me worried about any trade right now is the health of the overall market. So join us tomorrow night, Sunday night, live, where we review the opening price action. Use that link below to get entered on our alert list of when we go live on YouTube. And don't forget, if you value automated technical analysis, use that link below. Invest in yourself. Give yourself an edge over other investors who do not have this tool. And trust me, these guys are adding subscribers hand over fist. So a lot of your competition is out there with TrendSpider right now. And if you don't have it, you're being outgunned. And if you do have it, you need to use it. They have an entire tutorial library. And don't forget that we offer TrendSpider for free with our silver and gold level memberships. And with that, folks, everybody have a really great remainder of your weekend. Hope to chat with you tomorrow night on Sunday Night Futures Live. Until then, be well and enjoy.